Did you know that 70% of processed foods that we eat has at least one GMO ingredient in it? And most corn and soy in the US is genetically engineered. And there's corn and soy in everything. There are GMO crops on half of US agricultural land. Maybe you don't care, but most of you do. Only 37% of you, the general public, is cool with GMOs, even when 88% of scientists polled say there's nothing to worry about. Both sides of the debate admit the issue is not so clear cut. To GMO or not to GMO? Let's get into it. To keep up with population growth, the UN estimates that the world will need to produce 70% more food in the next 35 years. But anti-GMOers say that production isn't the problem, it's distribution. Inequality, politics, waste, and conflict are the real reasons that people go hungry. But they're so hard to solve. Why not let super seeds save the day? Pro-GMOers say GMO seeds can give larger yields under tougher conditions and withstand insects, disease, and herbicides. They also say GMO seeds use fewer pesticides. But USDA research found that the most widely used GMO crop, Monsanto's Roundup Ready soy, resulted in 527 million more pounds of pesticides sprayed in the US. Not to mention that glyphosate, the key ingredient in the most popular herbicide, Roundup, has been linked to diseases like Parkinson's and cancer. These health concerns are huge reasons why many people don't trust GMOs. They've only been in supermarkets since the mid-90s, but most studies so far haven't found evidence of GMOs being harmful to humans. There's not a single case of harm to human health or the environment in 20 years of genetically engineered crops and 40 years of genetically engineered medicines. But there are scientists who say we should be more concerned about the environmental impact, like... The loss of biodiversity, you know, plants and animals, um, the dead zones caused by fertilizer in the oceans, uh, the contribution of agriculture to climate change. The majority of GMO seeds come from four giant corporations who run the food industry. And corporations are about making money, not necessarily about sustainability, biodiversity, or people's health. Opponents worry that the rise of GMOs will lead to an even more industrialized food system, one that they say is already flawed. It's one that's led to disease, displacement, worsened climate change, and pushed out small farmers. On that last point, while GMO seeds might be making life easier for some farmers, they are more expensive, and they've got patents. So some farmers are being priced out, and some are even being sued for using seeds without permission. Proponents say that's the way the cookie crumbles and we should innovate or we'll be missing out. So wouldn't labeling foods that contain GMOs appease both sides? More than 60 countries require GMO labeling, but not the US. Here, corporations spend millions to defeat initiatives to label GMOs. Huh. So, should we keep innovating and eating and ask fewer questions? Or should we slow down and chew on it a little? This is some terrible news because I just learned that climate change is actually threatening cocoa production, which means less chocolate for people who love it, like me.